God damn it. Alright, welcome to another episode in the playthrough of Rent to Rismo 7. This one literally took me. Um, yesterday I had like. Um, I think it was a. So now I also already did uh, 42 kilometers. I don't know how many kilometers I did yesterday on this track trying to get uh, the first place here. But it was a lot. The Yesterday's episode is like, I don't know, four hours long or something. Um, and then in between I also did many, many laps because it the car is, is tuned, it's lightened and it has uh, a wider track and but it is it's on standard tires and it's also the, the engine is barely tuned, it only has like an exhaust and an air filter. So it's like 357 bhp. And that first place car was crazy quick. I mean it's a 650 pp race and we had like 600, I don't know, 37 pp. Not even Not even that m much lower than the um, than the max. I assume the first place car had the max, like 650. But still, it 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 felt like a huge difference. And so, but I really was at the end of the previous episode. I did make. Uh, I got a first place. But I yeah, basically in the last she came, I ran him off track. Uh, and that's not how I want to win. So I really redid it. The only annoying thing is I shut down the PS5. Um, and then I started, uh, yeah, like uh, an hour ago. And the the field is a little bit different. It's random, but l luckily not that different. It's only that uh, Porsche, an uh, 80s Porsche that you see to the left, that red one. I don't think it was in yesterday's episode because because I really wanted to have the exact same race for the exact same challenge. But I'm pretty sure overall for the rest it's the same. That first place car is the same. There were uh, other cars that were the same, so I, I think it is really comparable what I uh, just won with uh, what I did in uh, the previous episode. But yeah, really happy. It's an amazing uh, race, I have to say. It's also weird, by the way, the weather. Uh, yesterday it, it, it started grey and then it had like two laps of, of clear skies. And here it's the other way around. So. It's more or less the same settings, but just uh, mixed up a little bit. The weather, the uh, opponent cars. Um, but anyways, it's a super exhilarating race. This car, these, these really are my favorite kind of cars. Those, those uh, 90s, um, the natural aspirated analog, latest of the real analog cars, so to say. Although they of course have electronic uh, fuel injection and they do have an ECU, etc. But still, it is totally uh, uncomparable with the crap that we see today, the boring crap. Like I don't even watch Formula One anymore because it is just not for me anymore. It, uh, yeah, it sounds like a, a, um, a cynic old guy bickering, but it used to be so much better everything. But um, anywho, I'm really happy that it worked and it didn't even take that many tries now uh, today. So um, yeah really happy that first place car it, it, it um, you would think it is doable but I'm also really happy that this game really gives a challenge if you set it too hard and of course you can make it as hard as you want if you don't really overpower your car and that's exactly what I didn't do I put like on the wing some some side skirts etc so we do have more downforce but basically, engine-wise, it's a very mild tune. It's I, I don't know what this car stock has, but we are only now at 356, 57 bhp, I think, which really is not that not that much. And that that first place car, etc. I think that are really all like four or five hundred uh, horsepower uh, cars. So. Um, yeah, it, it was just a super fun challenge I found with a lightweight car and stock uh, brakes, stock tires, uh, only like um, the air filter, exhaust system, lightened to level 3, uh, suspension to lower it a bit, but yeah, you don't really need to stiffen it up that much because we didn't have grippier tires. Um, yeah, that is 
basically it i think maybe i also had like a lighter uh, flywheel and clutch uh the racing version but for the rest pretty um relatively stock for a race car and yeah it was just an amazing challenge uh, and it's very uh, happy that uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward what races are to come because this was one of the best racing experiences I had. It was so much fun. All right, I'm gonna watch the replay just, uh, and I'm also gonna save the replay. Can we save the replay? Uh, I don't think you can do it here. You need to do it from the other menu. Anyways, here we go. I so underestimated it, I really parked it for a long time because I thought it, it, it reminded me too much of Gran Turismo Sport compared to the actual polar entries but it improved so much over the last two years, it's amazing. circuit it has so much that fast sweeping bend at the end the old rouge the straight technical corners this is such a fun circuit Well, the black one, I'm not sure. I think 
think it was. So it's basically only, I think, the last car that is different. That red 911, I don't remember. Also epic that we're driving against a 959. But now for the real target, the number one car, it was crazy quick. I really had to have it from my downforce, uh, downforce in the corners and from the, uh, the light, uh, lighter car, not from the power. This one I always screwed up, never felt right that she came. As uh, the first turn as well, very often felt like I was much slower than the competitors. See how far the first car is in front. It's not even in the picture yet. Right, I may have cut the sheet and uh, or rouge a little bit over there. But yeah, sometimes you have no choice. It's either crash because you also cannot break there while you're turning. And you will spin out. Man, this really gives me the the, the awe that I had for when I was playing the original Gran Turismo 3 and 4. I missed the city tracks, but for the rest, it's great. So with these new physics, amazing, there he is, first place car. Such a beautiful Porsche, the 993, last of the air cooled ones. I think it's a 997 GT3, the other one.
man, they did such a good job in the sound department. Even compared to when the game came out, I found there was much, way too much echo. Reverb. Now it's much better. At least maybe I'm imagining it, but that's my thought. section the AI is a little bit slower I find Includes menu book 31. I'm pretty sure. Very nice. We also have the 964 now. Uh, congratulations, you've got all three cars. This completes your Porsche 911 collection. Once you've collected your rewards, I've got some stories to tell you about these cars. S Circuit the Sand Crop. Germany's Porsche is a world renowned manufacturer of sports cars. And the 911 is one of the company's most popular models. Uh, not most, the popu most popular. Not one of, but the most popular. 
Since its debut in 1963, the Porsche 911 has developed a reputation as something of a masterpiece. It has a compact body, a powerful engine and a rear wheel drive layout. The engine is also mounted right at the back of the car, making it an RR, rear engine, rear wheel drive. This basic setup has remained in place for over half a century. The Porsche company was established by the genius engineer Ferdinand Porsche. Before the founding of Porsche, Ferdinand had worked on many racing cars and aircraft engines as a young man. The first Porsche went on sale in 1949. Holy shit. It was a sports car known as the Porsche 356. With its compact body and rear mounted engine, it was immediately entered into various races. In many ways, the Porsche 911 is an evolved version of the original 356, an evolution which continues to this day. Ah, cool, Supra. It's totally different, but also fun. Um, I don't see any... Normally there are maybe some entries or some dialogue. NPCs on the car that you have selected because this car is I think the first time I've had it selected since returning to the cafe and normally if you have a new car maybe some designer pops up to share some tidbits apparently not now Right, but that's um, 911 is a keeper. He served me very well. Totally useless for one specific car. Anyways, it's a really uh, cool one. I also hope to buy one that is stock because we cannot undo uh, the body lightening, the body widening. But yeah, that's for later concern. Supra 3L GT Turbo, where is that? Interlagos. pp car the gtr is the recommended car which i find a lot less fun to drive compared to the old school porsches but it is what it is suzuka and then again that last one i already have the car in my garage then it doesn't show you which race it is it's so annoying For this menu you'll need to collect models from Toyota's Supra series of sports cars. I'd like you to get a feel for the Supra's history from this first generation 1988 model to the GR Supra in 2020. I'll tell you more about them once you got all three. Come see me when you're done and I'll give you a reward. Man, what an amazing race that was Spa. It was such a nice challenge will be hard to top. Alright, I have to do a very quick sanitary break, then we are going to find a car and go into the Supra races. One second.
SC model of the Aventador LP754 Superflux is announced that it's the Geneva International Motor Show inheriting its SC designation, blah blah blah. They are a little bit um, too. Uh, there's not enough time to read it, but I think all these entries are also part of the, the car encyclopedia, so to say. I'm not sure. So let's check that. Top pre war performance, the AC 1938. Let's see if we find that entry in that. Uh, I have to think, where? I don't even know where that encyclopedia is. There's some. God damn it. There are so many layers to this game, but it's really uh, in depth. I like it, but. Um, it's like this. It's like this very long timeline. Ah, it's a museum, I think it is. So then we are going to look at 1938. And is there anything on an HC there? Ah, it's so weird. Why? Ah, here is a 1938. Was that that? Yeah, the HC2900. Alright, but it's, I thought it was just a copy paste into the, um, the full screen um, yeah, placeholder screens for what we just read about the um, Aventador and that Alfa Romeo. But they, it does seem derived from this encyclopedia or whatever it's called. But it's not a, a full cop. Ah, yes, it is. You can click it actually. All right, cool. So then I don't really mind that it's that short. Uh, the transition time. I have no time to read it because we can just read it over here later on, which I for sure will be doing. That's also part of the experience getting this full automotive history in the heads. Uh, it's called Museum. It's a really nice entry. Just when you need a break. Alright, so I think it's 600 pp races. Let's see where that last race was for the GR Supra. Oh, it's all in America. One was in Interlagos. Where's the other one? Ah, oh, fuck me. Is it. Over multiple continents, yeah, fuck me. So that means I have no idea where that GR Supra race is. So now I have to randomly go through this makes zero sense. Uh -huh. I have to now randomly go through here to find the race location. It's so retarded. Because if you don't do this, I want all the races that are there in a menu book. Otherwise, ah, here it is, I think. Yes. This is the GR Supra. You see it as the reward car. <coughs> I, I have to do it because otherwise, let's say you have a menu book, you have all three cars already in your garage, then your menu book is over. You don't need to race at all. That makes no sense. Uh, this is, I think, a new circuit for me, recently unlocked. Or maybe it, it does look familiar, but maybe I unlock the. No, there's only one layout. I wanted to say maybe I unlocked the winter version of it, but not quite sure. All right, so this one we will be doing last because that was also the order of the menu book. 
this one we will be doing first. That is the um, 1988 Supra. Ah, so we are also driving against Porsches, etc. Fair Lady. TR Yaris, it's a really weird mix. I don't really like that. That total hot hotspot or mix up of different era cars. Vroom vroom, get ready to burn rubber in this PP restricted event for turbocharged engines. Ah, so this does remind me a bit of the old school games, like with the themes. So this is a turbo race. Uh, and how much? 700 or less. Right, so that's a really uh, high PP actually. So either we tune one, I would like to drive the uh, Nissan 300ZX, but I'm sure in stock form it will be way too slow, so we have to significantly tune it. And I do like tuning if it's really necessary, but I also like to use stock cars in their stock form. So let's see if there's anything nearing the 700 pp mark. Now we have a Supra over here. I don't understand why it recommends a Nissan car for Supra races. Oh, you can also just skip your mini book and if you don't want to do it, I cannot imagine why. You can just buy the cars actually. But 700 pp, that's so much. Even this car is 600. It's a, a modern Lamborghini. I don't understand. GTR 2017 yeah, That's 600 pp So I'm gonna look for 600 pp not 700 700 is crazy All right, I'm going to go with 600 I do want a challenge We do are go we are going to take a Japanese car just in keeping with the Supra theme. This one has pretty high PP for such a small car. Man, those headlights are ugly. Those little silver edges around the headlights looks really... Would for me be a reason not to buy the car or to make it black or something. Looks really like like he's wear the, the car is wearing like a miniature glasses. Here in the NSX, it's amazing, but I don't have the uh, money for it. I do think. Let's check our garage. I think I have an NSX. Ah, you can actually not only sort, but also select, filter. Um, Alright. Ah, 
Uh, here's the 300ZX. I think it didn't drive that well. I drove it like a year and a half ago when I was doing the first part of the playthrough. We could use this one. I really like NSXs, but I also want to mix it up. I'm otherwise driving too much in those cars, in the same cars. This was the car that I used online a year and a half ago. I won quite some races with it. Really cool. I wonder what is GT300 versus GT3? Probably some Japanese uh, racing class. All right, we could go with a BRZ and tune it, but I don't really like that car, honestly. I also don't really like the look of the new Supra. I find it resembles a freight train somehow. Don't know why. I have an unconscious association with a freight train. This one is pretty damn cool. We could maybe tune that one to 600 and then just, but we will not be reaching the correct top speeds, but it is a cool car. Um, although, I'm pretty sure it's on racing tires, no? No, sports tires. It would be pretty funny to win that event. Ah, no, we need a, yeah, we need a turbocharger. We can put a turbocharger on it. Then we also have a bit more power. It's a shame that there is no um, hold key here or um, a menu to directly go to a testing uh, location to test out your new car. Let's quickly do it ourselves. All right, let's put on some, we have five laps, I guess, in those races. Let's check out how many laps it are. Because if it's only five, I will be using soft tires. That in itself is already quite an upgrade. The only thing I'm worried about is that we will be severely lacking in um, yeah, five laps in top speeds. Let's see what we have all on board. Can we adjust height? Yes, we can. Do we want to adjust it? Uh, not really. We do have grippier tires, so we are going to increase the um, stiffness. Let's do by two. So we go from 245 to 265.2 amens. And here we go to 45. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, what else do we have? 
uh, we can adjust the height, but let's, it's already quite low, I would say. Downforce. Oh, wait. We cannot adjust. Well, we do have a wing, I have no idea. It's a static wing, probably. Turbocharger, none. We have 200 bhp, which is way too little. But let's see how it drives, whether it's a fun car. HPP does it have with the soft tires? No. Five seventy six, quite a lot actually, but we're really lacking straight speed, I'm sure. So we could put a turbo on there. Supercharger, where is a turbo set? God damn, it's so annoying. I always press the back button thinking that gets us to the main tuning menu, but it are these tabs here. For racing, there are no turbochargers. Yeah, we could go with the turbocharger. What would it do? 598. Then we go to 250 horsepower. 598, 250, same. 23.9 torque, 312 power to weight. 24 torque. So the mid-range actually has more torque. It doesn't even have a sports silencer. I don't know, it looks like kind of a race car, but Some items that I would expect. Ah, it has a racing silencer. Nice. And weight reduction. I assume it has as well. No. Not even stage two. Not even stage one. Yeah, it only weighs 800 kilograms, which is super light, by the way. Right, do we have a fully customizable gearbox? Stage 
17,000, it's quite a bit. Because we are going to need to raise our top speeds, I guess. Transmission. Brake pads, manual adjustment. Here, ah, we can. No, we cannot adjust it. Let's just see how far we get. Uh, it could be um, money wasted. But no pain, no gain. We are going with the medium RPM. Oh, we also have a low one. That's not, I am not sure why that would not be available. Fitting a turbocharger is simply way of boosting a car's power. This compact turbo kicks in at low revs, increasing torque in a low to mid RPM range. Just remember if you're fitting a turbocharger, you really need to tune the ECU and intercooler accordingly. It's especially true if you're adding a turbo to a naturally aspirated car. Alright, that's a good tip, was not aware. Right, so we have that one, then we also do an intercooler which is apparently not available. Ah, we can put a racing intercooler. Why can't we do a semi-racing? No idea. A racing spec intercooler that gets the most out of force induction tuning. This is a high capacity racing intercooler that gets really effective at reducing power loss caused by heat. If you're looking to get the most out of turbocharging, a good cooling system is an absolute must. Right, they also said something... Oh, fuck me, again I'm pressing the wrong button. They also said something about um, tuning. So let's put... Ah, not possible. Why is that not possible? Maybe we already have it? Fully customizable computer. Right, I'm wasting quite some money if we are still not able to win in this car actually. Um, let's go with the... what else? Yeah, we needed that gearbox. Fully customizable. Nice, my uh, D-pad stick on the steering wheel starts to work better. The down direction, which you use a lot when navigating, very often didn't register. I had to pull it really hard, which is also not good for the... Um, little uh, D-pad stick itself. This is a fully customizable manual transmission. It lets you adjust the final gear ratios as well, which is good news because they can really affect lap times. All right, now... Let's test the car. Uh, 
Right, so we have a bit more horsepower, 265. Man, I really wish I could do torque unit as Newton meters instead of KTFM, which nobody uses. Um, anywho, we are top speed adjusted, 260. Is that enough? Yeah, it looks pretty good, right? I think we're good. We're not even gonna test. Let's just see how we fare in the race. I'm not sure why I'm taking this car because I really didn't like the sound of it. So maybe we will not be doing all three races with it, but I do like it that it's such a small car against big cars. Here we go. I like cars with a tendency to oversteer. It's easier to find grip at the limits of the rear tires than the front. That's why my Super has me set up just the way I like it. Toyota has produced all sorts of legendary cars, including the AE86 and also this AT Supra. It's a popular car in the US to this day. If I could pick my three dream cars to Nissan Skyline, R34 GTR would be in second place. The long nose housing, the straight six engine is its most famous feature, but the rear is pretty cool as well. What a random piece of information, like, yeah, that will be in second place. Okay, but then what's in first place? Alright, here we go. Much 
braking. It's actually a pretty fun field. All these little tuned up Japanese cars. But yeah, there is again one car way in front. Feeling that I got a push, I'm not sure, but this doesn't help us get to the front. Ah, uh, there he is. Two cars at the front, three cars even. does did wonders. Seven at the front as well. I don't think we will make it this attempt. Right, I cheated a little bit.
really feel fair winning this way. So we will be, uh, I will be doing it one more time and try to win fair and square. Fuck me, I'm not even winning. Swap option is now available at car maintenance and service. Alright, let's try and go for first place. That's super cheating. fun race actually. <laughs> the fact that we have, are so light and can break so late is pretty fun.
So far, so good. high graphic engine all the way up to 8K.
134 or whatever it is. Was that also in the previous race? I don't remember. where I could gain on them and I screwed it up.
Nice! Nice! It was a close one. It was a fun race. Totally different than the Porsche race that I really enjoyed, but actually fun as well. Alright, let's watch one lap of replay. All these custom cars, they really make it more realistic, much more individual. Custom liveries, custom setups. rumble of the uh, Impreza over there, very distinct. distinct sound of that um, R34 I think it was engine or maybe it was an R33 that we overtook at the end um, anywho really fun but do we want to use this car for the other races as well yeah we also want to make some progress so changing cars tuning them will probably take quite some time in itself we had that new circuit yeah, there don't seem to be too many long straights so i don't know the circuit at all 
maybe we should do a certain circuit experience first. Shall we do that? Yeah, I think that's a good one. So, yeah, or not. Let's first just finish the menu book. Yeah, let's finish the menu book. Otherwise, I'm getting on all kinds of tangents. Um, Let's just see how the car holds up on this circuit. If there are a lot of straights, then we have a problem. Four laps, yeah, so that basically probably means that the, the straights are very long. I've switched from an Impreza to a WRX, but even though I've changed my car, I'm still Subaru through and through. I hope you get to take part in a rally someday. I've tuned my car up to make it more competitive. Today, at long last, I've switched to a Nissan GTR. I've already won prizes at French Gran Turismo competitions in the past, so I'll be trying my best to do the same here. All right, I'm afraid that we will not be competitive here. I don't even need to try it, I think. Nope. Um, I... Do think, just to mix it up that I will be doing that circuit experience first. I really don't know the track that will help me out. So that we will be doing that in the uh, next episode, first circuit experience. Then probably change up the car. Although I don't really see that RX-7. Uh, there's an RX-7 there. And what was the other fast car, the Cosworth? Is that Cosport still there as well? Because that one was crazy quick. No, I don't see it anymore. Yeah, I can try to do the race, but then I will fail a lot trying to figure out the best lines, etc. Let's just do that uh, circuit experience first. And then afterwards we will be um, continuing this menu book, probably with a different car, or we have to tune it for higher top speed. But that will be in the next episode, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you there. For the meantime, don't forget always do keep on gaming. Later.